Snowdonia, the Brecon Beacons, and of course, Pembrokeshire National Park. When most people think about Wales's great outdoors, these are the places they tend to think about. What they don't realise is that there is a very special part of Mid Wales that is little known by many. That's where I come in. I'm Dan, and as my channel name suggests, I just love getting off the beaten track. There are few better places to do this, in my opinion, than the Cambrian Mountains in the heart of Wales. This area is wild, remote, and totally unspoiled for the most part. So as I parked my car below Clare and Dam and Reservoir in the Elam Valley, I followed a 4x4 track for a short while before heading off for a two-day adventure in the area often referred to as the last wilderness in England and Wales. Hi everyone. I tell you, I am one happy man today. The last time I was in the Cambrian Mountains in this area of Wales was actually last August. That was, quite, in my opinion, that is far, far too long. As you can see already, I'm surrounded by stunning, or a stunning landscape, and I've left all signs of civilization behind. My only company, I don't know if you can hear it, is a, is a beautiful mountain river and lots of mountain sheep. And the great thing as well, actually, because it is the end of April, it's lambing season. I've seen some really, really gorgeous sort of little lambs already. Hopefully we'll see plenty more on this trip. I'm in a stunning valley at the moment, absolutely gorgeous. So I think I know I know I've only just spoken to you, but I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you a bit further up. But you know what? I've already got the drone out. I'm going to show you just how stunning this landscape is. Well, that wasn't bad, was it? Even if my woolly companions for the next couple of days don't appear to particularly enjoy my company. Never mind. You can see I'm still following the same sheep that you saw a bit earlier on. I don't know whether they were planning to go up the valley, but it seems to be the way they're heading anyway. And yet, I happen to be sort of following in their footsteps. But you can see that the landscape here is really craggy. And you know, this is quite unusual for the Cambria Mountains there. They're not known for being sort of as rocky and craggy as places like Snowdonia and like the Lake District. But if you like your crags, you can still find them here. Now we have to look at the map because as you can see, I've kind of come to a bit of a tributary. You know, I'm heading for the summit or the highest point around here, which I believe is called Trigon, uh, Dragon Val. It's the second highest mountain in the Cambria Mountains at 645 meters. So I guess the only way is up, but yeah, I need to look at the map to work out exactly where I'm heading. I'll do that and I'll come back soon enough. Well, finally made it. The legs are tired, but boy, is it worth it. I'm sure you'd agree as well, that is one hell of a summit cairn. Never seen one like it. You know, it's 645 meters. I know this is no Everest, you know, compared to the bigger mountains in this country, but you know, it's high enough. I, do, I always wonder how on earth they build these things this remote. But anyway, I think the views, I've just, I've struck gold with the weather. So I think I'm gonna stop talking and just let the views do the talking instead. Just check this out. Not bad, eh? I just thought, you know, you've seen the amazing views. But yeah, you can see why this area is known as the Green Desert. You know, you can see why. You know, it might not be rugged, you know, it might not, the mountains might not be that high, but it is, you know, just vast, so empty. One of the big, you know, probably the closest we can get to a wilderness in England and Wales, certainly. Yeah, if I look north, you know, you can see, you know, the weather's coming in sort of to the north, but yeah, you've got, you know, the Cambria Mountains' highest mountain, Pimnamon, which I climbed last year. That's off in the distance. I'll show you now what we can see looking south. Yeah, looking south, we've got the Brecon Beacons. Oh, absolutely stunning. So there we go. 30 minutes later and the tent's all up. Nice, easy pitch as well. Put it just below the summit, so it offers a bit of shelter, hopefully, if, it, if the wind does get up. 
But I will say, actually, just after I showed you the views, um, a couple of guys turned up, sort of local guys. I think they were surprised to see me as I was then. <laughs> wasn't expecting it. But yeah, I had a good old chat, and they pitched on the other side of the summit there. And yeah, I might, might go and have a drink with them later. We never know. But I've got to say, let's look at the views again. You can see the weather's changed, the light's changed as well. But it doesn't matter if it rains, I've got my shelter. Right, the stomach is really, <laughs> really empty. I need some food. So let's get some grub on. I went on to film for nearly two minutes here. One of these days, I'll learn that watching a man eat a dehydrated meal and drink beer inside a tent really isn't all that exciting. All I shall say here, though, is that the booze went down well, as did the salmon and broccoli pasta. By around half ten, I settled down for a sleep marathon. It ended up being a pretty broken night, if I'm honest, due to these noises. I woke feeling pretty groggy, and conditions outside were not what they had been the night before. Good morning, campers. Well, what a change of conditions, eh? You know, those, the, sun, the sunshine and those amazing views from last night seem a distant memory now. You know, nothing out there at all, and the wind's picked up. You know, because of that, I didn't get the greatest night's sleep in the world, if I'm being honest. Pretty broken, but hey, I'm not going to complain. It's just part of it sometimes when you're old camping. But as you can probably see, there, the steam's coming out now. Water's nearly boiled. And yeah, I'm looking forward to some... I've got some porridge for breakfast this morning. I've got some beans and sausages with a nice sort of um, roll of sort of cheesy bread to mop up all the sauce. Oh, looking forward to that. And of course, coffee as well. Right, there we go. Water's tumbling over. Time to serve up. Let's get some breakfast on the go, get this tent away, and we'll get moving for day two. Look forward to enjoying it with you. Right. Well, while I walk in the clouds and conditions that are perhaps more typical of upland Wales, let me whistle you a song, just to mirror the conditions we've got today. Let's see if you can get it. That was, of course, the great song choice, Walking in the Rain. Brilliant music, but it made up for the weather, which was rubbish. Thankfully, though, on that front, things started to improve. I've just stopped for a sec. You can see those sort of those, those mountains in the distance. That valley at the bottom, that's where I'm going to be heading. You know, I can see what those two guys were talking about. It looks pretty dramatic even from here. And I think the clouds, I don't know if you agree, but you know, when, when the clouds are shrouding the mountain tops, it makes them look even more mysterious and beautiful, in my opinion. But the other reason I've stopped is... I mean, not only is it physically beautiful, but it's just so peaceful. I'm going to shut up for a minute and just let you hear what I can hear. Isn't that amazing? All I can hear is the, the newly born river and yeah, skylarks just sort of singing and dancing in the, in the grass. I tell you, I find this so, it just, it's so good for my soul. I recommend it to anyone. Anyway, enough of the spiritual stuff. Let's keep let's keep cracking on.
that wasn't bad, was it? Absolutely stunning. And I tell you, if it was a slightly warmer day and the sun was out, I'd have gone for a bit of a dip. There were so many like really, really good plunge pools to take a dip. So yeah, one, one to know, one to come back for on a better day. But yeah, if you're watching this and you're wondering where this stunning valley is, I believe it's called the Apon Gwesin. It's, yeah, you know, you don't need me to tell you how stunning it is. I mean, look at it. Just a bit further back, don't know if you can see them. Yeah, I had a family of sheep and a gorgeous little lamb that was just laid out on a little path that I'm following. And it didn't move right until I was almost on top of it. Didn't want to film it though, just didn't want to scare it. But yeah, as gorgeous as this valley is, the next you'll see of me is in a place in, a, in another valley that I'm really, really excited to show you. So I'll catch up with you a bit further downhill. I passed many other cascading streams and decided to fill my bottle at one. As I made my way downhill, I finally entered civilization and then had to even walk on a stretch of very, very quiet road indeed. That incredible place I was talking to you about, I've reached it. It's not the first time I've been here, but it's still absolutely stunning. I'm in a place called, I'm going to struggle to pronounce this, Abaguezin, I believe, Abaguezin Common. It's little known, but, well, I'm going to stop somewhere along its length for some lunch. But I think the best thing for me to do is to stop talking and just let this camera and drone do the talking instead. I'll get different shots along its length and I'll come back to you once we've done that. Just check this out. <laughs> Well, what, what a valley, eh? And what a mountain road as well. You know, it takes me back. I never forget sort of doing driving this road for the first time uh, with my partner at the time. We were just so blown away by how stunning it is. You know, that big, that sign you saw from Trigueron, you know, Port Trigueron, sorry, 13 miles. It is literally 13 miles of nothing. I think you pass one building. Other than that, you pass, I think it's the remotest church in Wales and also the remotest telephone box. That's a sight, I tell you. So if you've never driven it, it's well, well worth it. It pretty much goes from, I think it's Pula um, in the east all the way over to Trigueron. One of the best drives I think I've ever done. But anyway, gotta say, I'm absolutely ravenous. It's amazing actually probably how many calories you burn doing all this walking. So I've got, yeah, pot noodle, king size, of course, it's gotta be done. Um, we've got some bread loaded with Nutella and then a cup of tea and maybe a piece of fruit at the end as well, just to get in some healthy stuff. Right, I think the next time I see you, it will be sort of me leaving sort of this valley behind and heading on towards the Botley. As I left Abergues and passed behind, I came upon this very remote house. It must be at least two miles to the nearest habitable building, and I couldn't help but think that the residents must either love solitude or just not like neighbours very much. My attention then turned to the road which zigzagged up the hill opposite. I can see why it is called the Devil's Staircase on the map as it averages a 25% gradient. Whew. Well, isn't it funny sometimes how things transpire? That house that I showed you earlier, the one where I said that anyone living there must hate people, well, I got chatting to its owner. And I'll tell you what, shouldn't judge a book by its cover. I couldn't have been further from the truth. The owner was a guy called Charlie, lived there with his partner, and he'd, he'd had the house for nearly 20 years. Such a friendly guy. You know, he invited me in for some uh, for a tea, and then yeah, he's given me a, he gave me a lift as well. Actually, a good a good bit of the way. I'm just doing a final bit now, and it's ended up being sort of I don't know if I come round. I mean, this is a path, believe it or not. It's sort of a path slash river. Right, I'm gonna do, have to do a bit of climbing. But yeah, he was oh, he was such an expert. You know, he's taking me round all these forestry tracks, showing me some places that I would have never have seen otherwise. So yeah, really, really appreciate meeting him. And if you watch this, Charlie, I know you said you might do. Thanks again for the lift and the education. Really, really nice meeting you. So yeah, mate, it's only a couple of kilometers now to the Bothy. That was leaping another stream. I'll see you down there, not too far to go. Last one, I think.
With fresh feet, I finally caught sight of Mole Prascal Bothy. Its setting is very remote, but gorgeous amongst the evergreen forest. It was good to go in and explore a building I hadn't visited for nearly a year and a half. It was as comfortable and well-maintained as I remembered. Memories soon came back, and nostalgia even had me finding our entries in the Bothy book. Talk about a blast from the past. That time, we were alone. But on this occasion, I'd be sharing with three guys from London. A good chat and laugh by the Bothy fire was had by all. Well-fed and whisked, I slept well and was soon ready for the off after a good breakfast and trip to the outdoor toilet. Spade in hand, of course. Close to the Bothy, I came upon what can only be described as a tree cemetery. Forestry work is big business here. I wish I'd seen that portable toilet half an hour before too. No more to say there. I was soon back into the eerie forest again, and it was hard work. The path soon vanished, and I was forced to clamber over and under fallen trees like one of the gladiators in that 90s classic we all loved on TV. Seeing open ground ahead was a huge relief. I am so relieved to see the end of that forest. You know, I like a tree. I do forest school when I'm teaching, but that was bloody hard to get through. But that's that, that's the first bit finished. Now I've got to negotiate the bog of doom. The footpath is, believe it or not, is marked on the map that's just crossing here, but there is no sign of a path at all. I'm gonna to have to forge my own way. Wish me luck. The bog of doom proved to be just that. The far reaching views so typical of this region were stunning, but progress was slow and energy sapping. I was really relieved to fill my bottle at a newly born river and pick up a faint path. One more ford was needed, and then it was easier going all the way back. Well, the feet are certainly fresh after that. It was just what was needed. I tell you, hopefully I've shown how tough that final leg was. You know, it's only probably about seven kilometers or so the walk, but it's taken me about three and a half hours. You know, and I don't hang around. I've not really stopped very much. You know, and I'm a pretty fit guy. So just beware, you know, if you're gonna do that walk in to Mole Prescow from um, Clarewin, then yeah, it's pretty tough. But I'm hoping, despite, despite how hard that was, I'm hoping in this video I've shown just how amazing the Cambrian Mountains are. You know, I've, I've, been, I've been there so many times I'll never get bored of it. And I've got to say, apart from the guys I saw at the Bothy and the two guys on the summit on the first night, I've seen nobody else. You know, on a bank holiday weekend in May, that's pretty special, I reckon, and hard to find anywhere else in the UK. Well, apart from, apart from the Highlands of Scotland. But yeah, if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to click like and subscribe. Always goes, you know, always, it's always really appreciated. and goes a long way in supporting the channel. Anyway, I'm back to the car for some drink and some much needed food. I'll see you soon guys. Adios.